how we doing everybody welcome to the mash and drum whiskey room i am jason c thanks so much for coming tonight on this whiskey wednesday what's up everybody hope everyone's uh, having a fun night uh we have a lot on tap tonight a lot to get into uh since my last two lives uh, i had some uh, really wonderful guests on um but yeah i want to attack the news uh, a lot of stuff going on in the world of whiskey uh i want to attack uh, some of these some of these uh, bottles that I've had kind of uh, laying around that I haven't gotten to reviewing, I want to open this. I want to open these up with you guys. Do some quick, uh, some quick take reviews. Uh, see if I'm going to do the uh, do like a full review on these or not. Um, so I figured it'd be fun to kind of open them with you guys. Uh, some of these are, you know, probably a lot harder for people to find, but um, and some are just kind of interesting. So want to crack those open with you as well. Uh, also. Uh, we're going to be making a uh, community blend tonight. Um, I'll once uh, once everyone gets settled in, I'll kind of uh, I'll I'll get into how that's going to work. Uh, but first, let's go to the chat and say hi to everybody here. See what's going on. We had a bunch of people here hanging out. We had Steve A. Chad Wallace was here. Uh, we had John Watson's in the house. How you doing, buddy? Mike Snook, the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews. How you doing, man? Dram Man Kentucky's in the house. Uh, let's see, Chad Holly, Miguel Torres, Carl Ivey, Andrew Spirell, how you doing, buddy? Steven Sussman's in the house, how you doing, man? Peter White's here, Brett Colombo, uh, Rob Davey, uh, Brandon Weiss is here, how you doing, buddy? Rebecca Page, good morning, Rebecca. Um, Scotty's here, he's at a golf, uh, golf outing tonight, but thanks for tuning in, man. I uh, hope you're, uh, getting some, some putts in there. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Dave Scott's here, he's having some Knob Creek, awesome, Karen B. Ford is here, how you doing, Karen, Mr. Bill is here, how you doing, buddy, um, let's see, who else we got, Rebecca Page, uh, oh, she said third shift, it's my morning, wow, uh, don't work too hard, Rebecca, uh, Yana Wishkin is here, she's drinking Wild Turkey 101, nice, out of the bottle, savage, Brian Brennicky is here, how you doing, Brandon, thanks for, uh, thanks for coming in. Uh, sorry, Brian. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Aussie whiskey guys here. Hope you have a. Oh, what did he say? Hope you. Oh, hope your day is awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Jimmy Jazz is here. Guy Davis, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Christine Deems is in here. She has iffy internet tonight, so if she pops out, guys, forgive her. Uh, Patrick Fulmer's in the house. Uh, let's see. And we got more people coming. Alan, the whiskey friend, man. It's a late night for you. Thanks for coming in. Ben Sacros here, Hawaii in the house. Ah, mahalo. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? And DH Silva's here. Uh, okay, I put in my 30 minutes of apartment cleaning. All right, very good. So DH Silva's got the Swiffer wet in hand, but he's going to drop it and drink some bourbon with us. Awesome. Uh, we got 53 watching right now. More people coming in. Awesome, awesome. All right. So uh, this is what we're going to do tonight, guys. So I have this beautiful... Um, decanter mash and drum decanter here that was provided to me by uh the same folks that do my glasses uh, my mash and drum glasses which is um uh gifts on glass.net uh so what we're gonna do tonight uh for every super chat i get uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start creating my uh community blend with everybody um i know uh bourbon junkies were, was kind of doing something similar to this and i thought it was a really cool idea so what we're going to do tonight, it doesn't have to get filled up tonight, guys, but with any uh, any super chat I get, uh, this, the person that did the super chat is going to call out any bourbon uh, to put in here to start building the blend. And then another big announcement is once August hits, um, August will be uh, Blend Again 2. So Blend Again 2 is coming this August, guys. So um, if you're... Uh, if you guys weren't a part of that on Blend Again in One, uh, which Christine deems won, um, she is uh, she she was the winner of it. And basically, uh, a lot of people I got nine different blends. People sent in some uh, some home blends they were working on, and the best uh, blend won a nice little gift uh, gift package. Um, so I want to start getting into that spirit. So every super chat tonight, the first blend will go in the bottle. So. Uh, all right, so Karen Beast, uh, let's see. Oh, the Bourbon Buddies are in the house. How you doing? Um, Curry Bowling's here. How are you? I Whiskey She Wines. Oh, she's dri they're driving. Can't stick around and talk. Thanks so much for coming in, I Whiskey She Wines. Thanks, Bobby and Sam. Anyone who hasn't seen their channel, I'm sure you guys have, but uh, they're they're awesome. Hey, we got the first Super Chat, $4.99 from Mike Snook. He said, get that blend started. All right, so you're going to get a crash. <laughs> Woo! That was a loud one. 
And Mike, you get to call out what you want me to start the blend with. So we're going to pour, uh, this will be the first one. Uh, oh, Carl Ivey comes in with a $5 super chat and he is coming in with the Bell Mead. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh my goodness. Chad Holly's now coming in with a $4.99 blend. He wants to come in with a Booker's. This is for you. <laughs> William Davilar wants the Peerless. Oh, I don't have the Peerless Bourbon, uh, uh, William, so you're going to have to choose another one because uh, I just, that was actually the bottle for I Whiskey She Wines. So I have, to send, I have to send that back, so I don't have it. But that's for you, William. All right, guys, so let me get the uh, – hold off on the Super Chats right now. Let me, let me get this blend started. So um, so Carl wants some Bell Mead in there, so we'll do the Bell Mead Cast Strength. So I'm going to start in this – glass right here this uh this measuring cup i'm gonna go two ounces at a time and then we're gonna work our way up and then we're gonna pour it in the uh we're gonna pour it in there uh all right so that's the bell mead then we had a booker's uh a booker's request oh so he wanted that one bell mead booker's <laughs> Peter White said blend the Basil Hayden with the drain <laughs> Nice, let's do some Booker's 2018-04 Alright, hold on Alright guys, I got the, uh, the next Booker's <clears throat> Oh my god, you don't have a scale? <laughs> No, I don't have a scale. Here we go. We're gonna pour in some kitchen table. Let's uh, pour that next one in. Get them on up to four ounces, awesome. All right. William Davilar, you can think about it, all right? <laughs> think about the next blend. We're gonna let this sit and uh, we'll, we'll get working on this. It's gonna be a good one, I think, guys. You guys always uh, have good suggestions. Um, so, Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews is in the house, and I want to give a call out to them. So uh, we're going to be doing a live stream next week with uh, Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews. These are This is a brand new channel, guys. I don't know if you've checked them out. Um, they, uh, it's three guys, and they're uh, doing some pretty cool reviews. I like the way they I like the way they kind of go through the tasting notes. Uh, really good guys. And uh, I'm going to invite them on the channel next week, kind of uh, uh, let you guys meet them a little bit more up close. Uh, they have a little bit over 100 subscribers now, so if you guys haven't yet, go uh, check them out, give them a sub, and um, uh, welcome in another whiskey tuber. It's always always fun welcoming uh, a new channel. So, um, William Davilar, which wild turkey do you have? Uh, all of them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey, the Dan Trout's in the house. How you doing, man? All right. So, first things first, uh, I want to thank all of my uh, patrons tonight. Uh, so, if your name is on this list, I want to thank you so much for the support. Thank you for everything that you've done for the channel, the support, throw in some ideas, and, and help me out along the way. So, uh, I really want to say thanks to all of you. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon, uh, have some cool perks involved, my live drum sessions, you could join up for a little as a dollar a month if you want. So, it doesn't matter to me, whatever you want to do. Uh, but thanks so much. Um, so now it is time to hit the whiskey news, uh, and while that's happening, you guys can um, think about what maybe next you want to put in the blend, but I'm going to start off first, though, before we get into the news, with the Weller 107, and I want to say cheers to you guys, so cheers, and let's get this Whiskey Wednesday started. Mm, Weller 107, oh yeah. All right. Let me move some uh, some glasses out of the way. I got a lot of stuff going around. Uh, all right, let's get into our first news story, guys. And here we go. It is dun 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 another distillery rickhouse collapses. And uh, I hope you guys uh, you guys have probably heard this, but it's nothing that we uh, we haven't. I'm sure you guys have heard if you're out in the whiskey news world. But another distillery rickhouse collapses in Kentucky just after the clock struck twelve on Monday morning. Uh, on a Monday, the northwest corner of Rickhouse H at the OZ Tyler Distillery in Owensboro, Kentucky, collapsed. Prior to the disaster, the warehouses was quietly aging 19,400 barrels. Um, roughly 4,500 barrels were affected, though only a small number were damaged. 
Uh, thank, thankfully, no employees were nearby. Nobody was injured. Uh, now, if you guys don't know OZ Tyler Distillery, uh, they they are they're a part of um, uh, you know they they do a few different brands, including Ezra Brooks. Uh, my one of my favorite budget uh, pours, which is Mellow Corn. Um, so, but today it produces OZ Tyler Kentucky Bourbon and OZ Tyler Kentucky Rye. Um, so that was kind of a that was kind of a bummer to see another one go down. Um, what else is going on here? Hey, new menus in the house. How you doing? Oh, J. Oh, JTS Brown. Oh, Bill Vote. He's he's drinking some JTS Brown. Nice. Um, Rebecca Page says clock struck twelve, and there she went. That's right. Um, yeah. So let's go to the second new story. This is for all you uh, Scotch fans out there. This is about Glenn Fittick. Uh, Glenn Fittick rebrands their core whiskeys. One of the most popular and widely recognized single malts on earth is getting a facelift and a new name. As of June 18th, 2019, Glenfiddich 12 year will be known as Glenfiddich, our original 12. The new bottle features a V-shaped cut into the glass, the brand stag symbol embossed in gold, and William Grant's signature on the bottle top. In addition, the brand is also changing the design and name of Glenfiddich 15 Solara Reserve to Glenfiddich Our Solara 15. A new look for the Glenfiddich 18 year will come in 2020. The whiskey inside the bottle will stay the same, but only the um, only the names and the packaging are changing. So for all of you Glenfiddich fans, uh, no worries there. Your uh, your whiskey's not going anywhere. Uh, let's see what do we got here. There are structural engineers out there. Tornado batch. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Jeffrey Wack? Thanks for coming in. Uh, let's see, Richie Z's in the house. How you doing, Richie? Thanks for coming in. Uh, always glad to see you guys here. Chad Holly loves the fire and cane. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I kind of liked the fire cane, but I liked it more in the beginning as it went down the bottle. It got really, really sweet and I wanted some more of that peatiness. Um, all right, let's go to the next news story, guys. Let's hit it with Templeton Rye Barrel Strength. Um, so for the second year in a row, uh, Templeton Rye Whiskey is releasing Templeton Rye Barrel Strength. Uh, for this release, the brand first selects a number of barrels that vary in age and marries them. The whiskey is sourced from MGP in Indiana and has a mash bill of 95% rye and 5% malted barley. Um, this is slightly higher than last year's release at 57.2. It's available in limited quantities in the United States with a suggested retail price of 60 bucks. Um, this will also be in, available in some international markets uh, for the first time uh, that they've uh, mentioned it. So interesting. I've never had that one. Anyone, uh, anyone in the chat ever had the Templeton uh, Barrel Strength Rye? I always hear very, very mixed reviews about it. Um, let's see. <laughs> TH Self said, there are Glenfiddich fans? I think so. Anyone ever, anyone ever had that, uh, that bottle of the, uh, the Templeton? I'm going to have another sip of this. Mm. Yeah, I love that stuff. All right. While you guys are letting me know in the chat, I'm going to hit up my next news story, which is this one I'm kind of excited about. The uh, Glen Dronick debuts a limited edition 10-year Portwood. Uh, blended by master distiller Dr. Rachel Barry, Glen Dronick Portwood initially aged in Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso Sherry Cast for 10 years. Then it finished maturation in port pipes from the Douro Valley in Portugal. The release is meant to celebrate the importation of cast port into Scotland in the 19th century. Uh, while the total number of bottles produced hasn't been disclosed, this is a limited edition expression that can be found at specialty retail, uh, retailers globally. It is non-chill filtered and bottled at a nice 46% ABV with a suggested retail price of about 76 uh, bucks USD, uh, 60 uh, euros. So um, I'm actually really excited for that one. I kind of want to hunt that one down. Um, let's see. Michael Hassett says he enjoyed uh, the Templeton, but not for 60 bucks. Um, John Watson's drinking the Wilderness Trail Weeded Bourbon, one of my favorite new distilleries. Good job, man. Uh, Carl Ivey says Glendronic is so tasty. That would be a sweet Glendronic. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for that one. Um, I don't know if I'll ever see it, but we'll see if it comes uh, near me. DH Silva, I know you have, have, always have your eye uh, out there down in uh, down in the party source. Let me know if you see that one. <laughs> Um, all right, let's uh, hit our next uh, new story. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. Another uh, another musical band is getting into the whiskey game, and it's Slipknot. 
Uh, next musical group to launch a whiskey. Uh, in the day and age when it seems like there are more bands with the with without their own liquor brands than with them. <laughs> Joining an incredibly long list of musicians and celebrities this week, heavy metal band Slipknot introduced its own brand, Number 9 Iowa Whiskey. The band partnered with Iowa-based Cedar Ridge Distillery to create this whiskey, which uses corn grown on the Cedar Ridge family farm. This is available in two, fair, uh, two variants, guys. This is Number 9 Iowa Whiskey, which is 45% ABV for $40. And then number nine, Reserve Iowa Whiskey, which comes in at 49.5% ABV for 70. Uh, it's available from August 10th. It will be available starting August 10th. Uh, it will also be available at the band's headline, Not Fest Roadshow, North American Tour. So uh, another band getting into the whiskey game, guys. Um, I've actually heard really good things about this whiskey. Um, it's it's kind of cool that they partnered with Cedar Ridge Distillery, which I know makes some pretty quality stuff. Uh, but, uh, if, yeah, if anyone gets a pour of that, you know, keep an eye out for it, especially if you're a Slipknot fan. Um, uh, Shiz Nilty says, I'd rather pick up Pikesville over the Templeton. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you on that, buddy. Uh, let's see. All right, you guys are still, man, you guys are pulling out some really good pours tonight. <laughs> oh, look at Makers for oh wait makers forty six uh, the whiskey friend Alan getting late Jason you wanted to say hi fella great show thanks a lot Alan thanks for coming in if you, any of you haven't checked out the whiskey friend Alan another uh, another great uh, YouTube channel definitely go check out the whiskey friend Jeffrey Wack is there a gimmick like the Metallica one aging with the music uh, no not from what I from my uh, from what I read Jeffrey this is pure um, they they partnered with a pretty you know they they partnered with Cedar Ridge Distillery which makes quality stuff they. They source and grain and age their own stuff. So uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. So it doesn't say anything about any weird gimmicky, you know, aging process, which is always, which is always good. So, hey, Linux cats in the house. How you doing, guys? What's up? Uh, all right. Next story is, I believe, is it this one? Nope. It's this one. I know you guys couldn't get enough of the Johnny Walker. <laughs> The Johnny Walker whiskeys have two more coming, guys. Um, Game of Thrones may have come to an end as a TV show, but that doesn't mean that the brand partnerships are meeting the same fate. Diageo has just announced two new Game of Thrones whiskeys titled Johnny Walker, A Song of Ice, and Johnny Walker, A Song of Fire. Johnny Walker, A Song of Ice depicts a direwolf, and A Song of Fire depicts the dragon. Uh, not much has been shared about either of these blended scotch whiskeys, however... Uh, Diageo says that details will be released in the coming months. For now, fans can pre-order the whiskeys, which are available on a first-come, first-served basis at ReserveBar.com. A Song of Ice is bottled at 40.2% ABV, while A Song of Fire is bottled at 40.8. The bottles will be $43 each. Uh, I can't wait to see your reactions in this about this one. <laughs> People are writing, why? Uh, let's see... Wise guy, whiskey guy said, Jason, I made small batch mix with WT Rare Breed and Barrel Infinity Bot. Oh, that sounds good, man. You should let that sit for a little bit. It'll probably get really good. Christine Deem says, don't torture us. <laughs> Finally, a whiskey to drink while watching season eight. Yes, exactly. Can you, yeah, New Menium has the perfect icons. It's the smiley face with money coming out of their, uh, out of its mouth. That's what, that's basically Diageo. They're like, oh, what else can we do? Now that it's over, let's capitalize on the ending. These things are still 40% ABV. Ugh. Pre-order a bottle that looks a lot like White Walker. Yeah, it does look like uh, White Walker. Uh, I'm overwhelmingly meh on that scotch. Yeah, Steve A., I would agree with you, man. And the big news to hit the news wire, the last story of the night, guys, it is this one. Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. Uh, Fred Minnick, uh, I'm going to take a little excerpt from his, uh, from his article that he wrote, which I thought was pretty brilliant. Uh, if you're in an industry that's growing leaps and bounds and you have a popular product that's selling for $12 and critics say it's every bit as good as your $40 competitor, what do you do? A, do you keep it inexpensive and be the people's champion? B, lower the quality of the $12 product so it's more representative of the market. C, discontinue the product and relaunch it with new packaging the following year. Or D, None of the above. <laughs> well, if you're Heaven Hill, you go with C, and that's what happened. Um, with the conversion of Old Fitz to Larceny a few years ago, some Old Fitz is still in the market, and that's just what happened with Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond 6-year-old, which was a fan favorite. Now, 
Um, I have a little bit. Uh, my one issue with with this new bottling that's coming out, guys, is um, uh, after missing from Kentucky store sales for you know the last year since it was discontinued. Um, you know, it's going to return now, one year older, and MSRP of um, uh, MSRP of forty bucks. It's going to launch in October. I mean, I get all that. My biggest problem with the release of this, guys, if nobody's heard, this is going to launch in October in limited markets in California, Texas, New York, Georgia, Florida, Illinois, South Carolina, and Colorado. So they discontinued the beloved bottle, relaunching it a year later with one year age statement, market up to 40 bucks, and abandon the exclusive audience in Kentucky at launch. Um, man, that is... That's a bold move by Heaven Hill, but you know what? It, it's going to work. People are going to be clamoring for this bottle. So it just goes to show you um, how much marketing and, and where people's heads are, especially in the business of bourbon these days with, you know, people just clamoring for different bottles, especially a bottle like this. It's just really interesting when I read that. Uh, let's see. Jeff Popio comes through with a $2 super chat. He said, Virgin Bourbon tonight. <laughs> That's for you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, I need you to pick a bourbon, any bourbon, hopefully I have it, uh, to add to the blend that's gonna go in this bottle right here. So I just need you to pick one bourbon, buddy. Uh, I'll catch it in the chat when I get a chance. Um, but now that we're finished with the news, guys, it's time to start pouring some stuff. So uh, we'll, save this, we'll save this beauty for last. Um, but what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna give you guys a choice of what to open first. Now. Uh, these are, these are bourbon bottles that I've had for a little while, but haven't really been able to get to review wise. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to review them cause they're either really exclusive or, um, they're really hard to get, uh, or some, or a couple of them, actually one of them is just, was just really interesting. It's, it's on the shelf. I think most people can find it. I just have never reviewed it or gotten into it. I want to get a quick take on it. So, um, Let's see, Jeff Popio. He hasn't. He hasn't. Um, he hasn't picked his. Uh, he hasn't picked his. Uh, his bourbon yet. Brian Brennick says, "I know I'm going to buy a bottle of that bottle and bond, even though it's a shame." Oh yeah, I mean we're all going to buy it, and that's and that's my point. I mean no matter what, we're going to go out and we're going to freaking buy the damn thing. Um. Oh, Dustin Silvestri just comes in with a five dollars super chat. There you go, buddy. He said, "What cast strength finish bottles you got?" Um, how about some Forgate? Will that one work? This is finished in Oloroso Sherry and Rum. I could pour this one in here. How about that, man? Uh, all right. I'm going to pick for you, Dustin. I'm going to pour two ounces of this in here. All right, here we go. Pour out two ounces of this one in the blend. I'm like a mad scientist. I love it. All right. Uh, Jeffrey Wax said, for the Woodford and Waffles Fund. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. I appreciate that, man. You get a nice, you get a crash for you, buddy. Uh, Brian Brennicke said, you need some nutty. How about a Knob Creek pick? That's a really good call. Brian, should I do Knob Creek rye or regular knob? <clears throat> oh, Dustin, I do have a, I do have a Bell Mead. Um, you know what? Will Davilar needed to uh, pick one. So I'm going to pick this one for Will Davilar. This is the Bellmead Cast Strength Cognac Finish. So I'll throw that in the blend too. All right, let's go two ounces of this baby. All right. Peter White said, no, send those two ounces to me. <laughs> uh, all right, he's, he's good with that one. Yeah, the color looks nice. Look at this. Look at the color on this one, guys. Woo, some good stuff in there. Um, Bourbon Apprentice, yeah. Uh, Minnick today, he said, Basil's rum has a chemically tasting sweetness as opposed to Angel, Angel's Envy barrel sweetness. But we're going to we're gonna find out. Uh, Brian Renegade said, let's go with the regular knob. All right. So I'm going to move my table here real quick, guys, because I, I have to get to my bottles a little easier here. So. Um, All right, I got a knob pick right here. Let's add this knob creek to it. Oh, 
This one isn't even open yet. Oh, Popio said A107. All right, thanks, Steve A. Dan Z, are you going to drink all that? No, I'm not going to drink all of it, but I'm probably going to try a little bit of it tonight. So we'll see how the blend is, uh, is coming along. Uh, we want some Willet for your eye. All right, let me grab that, guys. Well, this is fun. <laughs> oh, Karen B. Ford says that blend really needs to include some Elijah Craig C918. Oh, see, she's after my own heart right there. Some Willet. All right. So I'm going to pour this into the decanter so we can get this started. And then we'll start adding some new ones here. This is going to be good. Oh, my God. It's already getting filled already. Oh, my God. You guys are the best. Look at that. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I need to get the Elijah Craig. Here it is, my fave, the C918. Oh, my God, I love this one. Hey, Rob from Whiskey in the Six is here. How you doing, buddy? All right, got that one in there. Oh, yeah, it's crazy dark. <laughs> That's for sure. If this blend is anything, it's going to be dark. All right. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's hold off here uh, because we're running out of room already. Look at this. Look at how nice and dark that is, guys. Woo, that's going to be a sweet, sweet blend. I might have to uh, get another bottle to start another blend one in. Oh, I have an empty Four Roses bottle over there I could do. Carl H. comes in with a $10. He wants to add a peated scotch. Ugh. <laughs> oh, Pete going to kill it. Oh, God. What do you think, guys? Should I add the peated scotch or should we start a separate scotch blend? <laughs> I don't know. He did He did send in 10 bucks. <laughs> you know what? I'll add a touch of I'll add a touch of peat to it. Not a lot. Maybe a lightly peated scotch. <laughs> okay you know what that's that's what i'll do we'll we'll do a separate we'll do a separate uh we'll do a separate uh peat blend so uh let me you know what i have a um i have an empty bottle over here hold on all right start off with a little art big 10 and this is a clean bottle this is my old four roses 130th bottle uh, you know what let's let's use it for uh, for uh, another blend here yeah I'm not putting I'm not putting it in there so all right so let's do about two ounces of the art big 10 in here all right Hard Bake 10 would be a really good base for a, a peated blend, so we'll keep the peated blend one here. This will be the second bottle, guys. All right, so uh, Dark Meat Chicken says start a bottled and bond only infinity bottle. I'm actually doing that, uh, Dark Meat Chicken. Yeah, so uh, when I do... Um, uh, when I do the uh, Blendageddon coming up in August, uh, that's going to be my blend that I send out to everybody because it's coming along really, really nicely. Uh, Rebecca Page says, Michter's Single Barrel Unblended. Uh, all right, I got one right here. So Rebecca coming in with a good choice. Thanks, Rebecca. I'll throw that one in there. All right, so Michter's 10.
All right, Bart Beckman's in the house. How you doing, Bart? Haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Spencer Mavis here, too. We got 100 watching, man. Uh, Cameron B. Ford said, good move. The Scotch blend could be very interesting. Yes. So now we have the, uh, the bourbon blend going. You know, I'm going to pour this one in now and see where it gets to here. Because this might be already full already, almost. No, it's getting close. Could probably get another maybe two or probably another four ounces in there. But look at this, guys. Woo! This is going to be nice. Going to let that simmer. <laughs> That'll be a beauty right there. Uh, Aussie Whiskey Guy. Currently during ECBP B515. That is May 20. Oh, old bottling. Yeah. I love the old bottles of uh, the... Um, I have one up there, too. It's a, what's, What proof is that one, Aussie Whiskey Guy? I don't remember what the proof is on that one. Richie Z, you're going to do a ton of blend and get in entries. Yeah, I just might. Chad Holly, uh, Octomore. If you don't have, shame on you. I do have an Octomore. So uh, let me grab that. And then, guys, what we'll do is um, we'll hold off real quick on the blends here because I have to grab bottles. We'll come back. We'll taste a few more. And then as you guys are thinking of some more whiskeys to put in, uh, we could attack that a little bit later. So let me get the Octomore. And if uh, Rob from Whiskey's in the Six is in the house, he uh, he actually uh, gave this to me because um, this one was running a little bit low, so I have a little bit left. But I've been sipping on this one. I really like Octomore a lot. So so right now we have Ardbeg 10 and Octomore in here. Aussie Whiskey Guys is 139.8 proof. I think that that's the one I have. I think. Let's get some Octomore in here. Oh, it's a little bit left. Uh, D8Cell says needs sherry in the peated mix. All right, well, next super chat. If someone wants to add a, uh, a beautiful uh, sherry one to that one, I can add it. So, all right, let's, uh, let's taste some drams here, guys. Uh, <laughs> Bourbon Junkie says Jep the Creed. Yeah, no. Uh, all right, so he said Michter's Bow Proof Bourbon. All right, well, we're going to get there. So uh, once we get there, I'll add it. Uh, Jason's final choice on the bourbon, William Davilar. Okay, man, you guys are coming in good. I'm going to give you some good crashes here. Um, let's see. Oak and Smoke, really like Master Drum, Decanter. Yeah, isn't it cool? Again, giftsonglass.net. Uh, I put a link down on the uh, the description of this, and you can see what their work is like. And they do all my glasses. Really love those, man. Uh, thanks for coming in, bourbon jerky. Uh, bourbon bourbon jerkies. <laughs> bourbon junkies. I'm starting to feel it just smelling this stuff. All right. I'm going to put this here. So the first one we're going to open tonight, guys, and I, and I did see a couple people crack this bottle open, uh, including Fred Minnick. And this was Jeff the Creed. So this is a uh, fairly new distillery in Kentucky. Um, this is a four grain bourbon. Now, the thing about this one, they're, they're kind of star of the show in this blend is, um, uh, actually, let me get a pen here and write down what people are putting for the blend so I know what to remember here. Uh, so we have the Michter's Barrel Proof in the blend. Good choice, man. And then William Davilar says, whatever, whatever I want, my choice. Cool, man. Uh, so, so this one has a, it's a four grain blend, uh, four grain blend, 98 proof. Uh, the thing about the star of the show is bloody butcher corn. Now bloody butcher corn is an heirloom corn. It's got a lot more, um, protein in it. Uh, so it has a little bit more of a nutty characteristic, uh, to it, but, uh, the other four grains in this is a malted rye, a malted barley and a malted wheat. Uh, so it's got a very distinctive flavor to it. Um, so I did want to I did want to uh, taste through this one with you because I haven't had a really good experience with this one, unfortunately. Uh, I was in uh, Kentucky last year, and I got to taste the new make of this, and I was really excited after I tasted the new make. Then I got this bottle sent to me, and um, I couldn't wait to open it, so then I did. And let's see if it's changed at all. All right. So the nose on this has gotten a tinge better. But for the most part, this tastes like pure paint thinner slash dusty boot. 
That's what it smells like. Uh, I mean, I've seen some reviews of this. Even Fred Minnick had had said that he found some some sweetness in here. There's a little bit of that, but it's just really really funky on the nose. It's almost like when you go down into like like a old basement and there's like mothballs and dust everywhere. That's what this smells like. And I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. Uh, Bourbon Junkies can back me up because they were here and I had them smell and taste this. And their reactions were friggin' priceless. Oh, have a good night, Miguel. Thanks for coming in, man. Bourbon Junkie says all the lies from Fred. <laughs> yeah, Dusty Boots, I'm telling you. I'm going to have a sip of this now. Oh. Oh, why? The humanity. I I think what they did, I don't know what they did. Because the new make tasted really good and really sweet. And I was really excited. It had a nuttiness characteristic to it. You know, those who like nutty forward bourbons. But I think when you malt all the grains and however they aged it, man, it's just, it's rough. It is a rough, rough bottle. It's just... I mean, that dust, that dusty boot flavor and that the mustiness and the mothball. I mean, I feel like you get that on the palate, too. It's just it's a shame. It's a rough bourbon. I've had I've seen a couple of good reviews on this, but I, I just don't see how unless they have a completely different bottle than I do. Um, it's a rough one. Um, Karen B. Ford uh, says totally back you up. This is the only bourbon ever that I will not try it again. It is so bad. You are very brave to try it again. <laughs> the oak and smoke whiskey review says that jeff the creed will ruin a coke christine deems that's the same face you made last time i know i just i can't i was hoping that a little bit of air would do this well but it just i can't i'm not drinking any more of this i, I can't i'm sorry i'm sorry jeff the creed i had high hope for your new make but oh scott says so you're saying fred minnick is wrong when you own a magazine how do you tell anyone your tough your stuff tastes like shit well that's very true um he could have been playing the nice card there but you know i really wish that this was a little bit better because i really think it like i said based on that new make uh you know i, I had some really some high hopes for them uh so there carl h was selling it for about i think it was like 60 bucks with tax which is just no i'll take Evan Williams bottled and bond for like 12 bucks any day of the week over that. Um, all right, guys. So I'll give you next choice of what I'm going to crack open. Uh, so this bottle, I'm going to thank my uncle Tony for. Better known as uh, Tony Two Times. Uh, he lives in Florida and he came across this bottle. So any of you people in Florida in the chat, this is a St. Augustine uh, distillery. Distillers. Um, I've heard some really good stuff about this one. This is a single barrel select bottle. Uh, St. Augustine is one of those places that they're distilling, aging, bottling, all on site. Um, or, actually, a bottle that I haven't tried yet that I wanted to crack open, uh, Wadden's uh, Single Barrel. So, I'll give you guys the choice in the, uh, in the chat. Which one do you want me to crack open? The Wadden's comes in at 47% ABV, and this St. Augustine comes in at uh, 48, so at 96 proof. <laughs> yeah, my face was a little priceless on that one. Uh, Tony two times. Yep. Does Tony work in the sanitation field? He's retired, actually. He was in insurance like you, buddy. So I wouldn't talk too much, Scotty. <laughs> All right. Saint, we have a we have some uh, we have more votes for the St. Augustine. All right. So let's go into it here. I've heard really good things about this one. So I'm excited to try this one with you guys. Uh, I wasn't going to do a full review on this because this is a single a single barrel select out of uh, this is a total wine pick, actually out of florida um so let's get a pour and let's see what we get on here oh good pop let that open up a little bit uh d8 still says i can get the wadens yeah exactly uh cap and make it happen says i hope his wadens is better than mine because mine is rough oh okay well we'll crack open the wadens right after this one so let's see what we get here So on the nose, it, it smells it smells young. Uh, it's a little bit green on the nose. There's definitely some um, 
Let me bring the bottle back here. There's some, uh, there's definitely like a young sweet, I mean, sweet corn mash on the nose so far. A little bit of vanilla, some caramels. Not very deep, rich, and dark at all. Very light. I mean, it is extremely corn forward. I don't know. I got to find out the mash bill on this because this smells like it's like 100% corn. I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of a smokiness there. This is like candy corns. I mean, it's really sweet. It's like Halloween candy corns. All right, let's go to the uh, the palate. See what we get here. Cheers, guys. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that is. Todd Korzynski, do you have any Wobbins barrel proof picks? I don't have a barrel proof pick, but I have a barrel proof, uh, which I'm going to do. I'm going to do the Wobbins and the barrel proof in a, uh, um, in a full review. Uh, but I, I did want to crack that open. This is going to sound weird, but oh my God, that's so strange. If any of you have been to Florida or live in Florida, Florida has a very distinct smell in the air, like their grass just has a very distinct smell. And that's the taste I get in that bourbon. I'm not sure what it is, how I can describe it. It's a very earthy type of uh, characteristic to it. Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm trying these for you guys who so save your money <laughs> in case you come across any of these. This is uh, uh this one is still better than the Jephthah. I would still take this over the Creed, but it's Yeah, it's it's got like this Florida not like a nice like sandy beach sea air. This is like kind of musty, earthy grassy uh air that's like i'm tasting in this glass it's obviously young i think they only age it for a few years uh given the the florida heat i would i would assume kind of like texas uh but the texas funk that you get in a texas whiskey is just way different more complex really good uh especially when you compare it you know to this this is just has a different type of funkiness to it it's just not it's not there but i'll still take it over the jephthah Oh, goes to show you how bad the uh, the Jephtha is if I'm taking that one over it. But yeah, yeah, no. Thank you, but no. Uh, whiskey shenanigans. What's up, Mike? He says, swamp ass water. Uh, maybe a little of that, buddy. Maybe a little bit of that. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we were going to open the Wathens next. So uh, this is 94 proof. Now, the thing about this one, this, this bottle made me laugh because on the front, you see it has a nice big eight on it. But that doesn't mean it's eight years old. Uh, it just says eight generations. So 250 years. Uh, this whiskey was personally selected by me. It is a characterized by its brightness and dryness and has no peer. What? Oh, it has no peer among bourbon whiskeys. Charles Medley. So, all right. The Medley brothers who create Wathen. So let's, uh, let's get into this one and let's see if this is any better than the other two. Now, I, I feel like I, I had a pour of this at some point, but I'm just, I can't remember. Uh, Dan Z tastes like alligator ass. <laughs> oh, all the Florida jokes now coming out, the Florida jokes. Um, the Linux Cat, I'm so glad I did not go to Jeff the Creed when I was in Kentucky. Uh, the blend will be the best thing of the drinks tonight so far. I think so, man. Yeah, it does look like the ETL bottle a little bit does it has it even has like those inner uh the little little hand grips there so let's see uh, what we get on the nose with the wathens guys all right now we're getting back we're getting a little bit back to normal here guys we're getting back on the same track here is it the same exact bottle as elmer t lee it might be let's see here Oh my God, it is. I didn't realize it. 
It's the same damn bottle as Elmer T. Lee. Look at that, guys. Same bottle. Wow. How did Buffalo Trace allow them to do that? <laughs> That's crazy. Killer Jolt's in the house. How you doing, man? Have 109 in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, so let's see here. This is the Wathens. Uh, now, this is a single barrel, so they do they will vary from bottle to bottle. This has a much more pleasant, sweeter nose. This is just all vanilla, all caramel. Really, really nice sweet nose on here. There's a little bit of a leathery aspect to this one, too. Good amount of oak. T8 still said lawsuit in three, two, one. <laughs> oh, man. Does the Wathens look a bit wider? Bourbon Apprentice? I don't know. No, when you... Look, you put them up against each other. They're exactly the same. This is the same, the same bottle. Same bottle. Um, you know what? There is a difference. It's where the neck meets the shoulder. That's the only difference. If you guys... Actually, maybe it's an optical illusion here. No, this looks a little bit wider here on the, on the neck. If you guys could see that. It's a little bit wider on the Elmer T. Lee. At least when the neck, where the neck comes down to meet the shoulder... All right, again, really like bottle nerdy here, but it's pretty damn close, if not the same. So yeah, this is um. This has a little bit of a peanut butteriness to it too. It's really nice, peanut butter. If you like kind of a nutty bourbon, this one's kind of nice. Not as nutty as Knob Creek, but this is more of a sweet, like a peanut butter type aspect to it. At least this bottle does. All right, let's go for the uh, palette. See what we get. Cheers. Well, oh, that's not bad. It's it's really sweet. I mean, I know, you know, a lot of people don't like to use the word smooth, but it is. It's very smooth. It drinks really light. Um, it's not very mouth coating. I mean, it's only this is only coming in at 47 percent. Uh, but there's some good flavors in here. There's some good, nice, bright vanilla, some caramels. You're still getting a little bit of that peanut buttery characteristic to it. Uh, very short finish. Let's go in for another uh, sip of this one. All right, so the second sip, the the nuttiness is coming through a little bit more. So it's kind of nice. It's it's not overly complex. Very good. Some really general bourbon flavors. This is a pretty good buy. I mean, this is a thirty-two dollar bottle at least here in Ohio. I mean. For 32 bucks, I'd probably still want to pick up, uh, you know, one of the cheaper bottle and bonds over this. But if you want something a little bit lighter, smoother, a little bit easy, probably would be really good in a cocktail too. It's a, it's not a bad bottle. Kind of digging Wathens. Yeah. Staying consistent too. You know, consistency is a big thing with me, so I like to... The more I taste it, I want to get those same flavors, and you're getting that in there. So, if anything, it's a consistent bottle. Um, obviously, it's not consistent from bottle to bottle being a single barrel, uh, so they probably will change up. But uh, this one is actually pretty damn good. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to do a full review on this one, and also the Wathens Barrel Proof, which I'd be really, uh, which I can't wait to taste now after tasting this one. So, um, Dranman said, that's exactly how my Wathens is. Easy, good flavors, just thin and no finish. Yeah, Dranman, that's pretty much what it is. There's not a big finish on it. It's pretty easy. Um, you know, nothing too complex. Uh, let me get a sip of water from the Red Solo Cup. Uh, Yana Wishkin says, Wathens is $40 in Connecticut. Oh, wow, that's more. That's maybe, yeah. No, DHL, yeah, this was only 32 bucks here in Ohio, uh, plus tax, so getting a little bit close. Uh, what's the barrel number on this one? Uh, let's see. Do they state a barrel number on it? Doesn't say. 
Looking for a barrel number. Is it on the bottom? Nope. Nope, no barrel number. Sorry, man. All right. What's next? Uh, all right, guys. Here are my next two choices. I think I know what's going to win in this one. So, what time do we got? Oh, it's 9.51 already? Holy crap. Uh, all right. So, do you want me to do the Basil Hayden Caribbean rum? Or do you want me to crack open the Michter's Bile Strength? Bill Vogt said I paid 34 out the door here in Ohio. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, it's on the neck. I don't see anything unless I maybe I ripped it off from the label. I'll check the label in a second, man. Uh, let's see if that's it. There it is. All right, so your barrel number is 4677 for the Wadens. So 4677 for the Wadens. Michters, Michters, Michters. Why would you even ask? Michters. <laughs> okay, well, we're still going to open this because I'm just curious to try this thing because I have no idea what to expect. But um, All right, let's go to the Michters. Uh, I have whiskey in that one. Let's go here. Yeah, we're definitely going to open them both, but I just want to see what was first here. So I traded for this bottle because um, this is one of those unicorn bottles that it, you, know, you never really see, especially in Ohio. They just kind of pop up randomly uh, from Michters. So, now the Michter's Barrel Proof Rye is my favorite rye in the world, but I haven't had a chance to chase this yet, so I cannot wait. So, let's get a pour of the Michter's Barrel Strength Rye. Now, this comes in at 106.8 proof. So, for those of you that don't know, Michter's uh, also uses a low entry proof. So, their stuff comes in usually around that one, 105 to... I've seen it as high as 115. I got a 115 rye uh, when I got that box uh, done. So that was kind of cool. Killer Joel said, I heard it's terrible. I want to see if that's true. <laughs> Dram Man said, sugar-free maple syrup is what I got. Uh, oh. Oh, Basil Hayden. Okay. DHL said, basil is boredom, shame, and disappointment. What is the MSRP for the Michters? So I believe the MSRP in that bottle is about 80 or 90 bucks. But it was on the uh, it was on the secondary for way more than that. Um, but I traded for it because I knew I would never see it. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the nose on that already is just ridiculous. Let that open up a little bit. I'm definitely putting this in the blend, guys. <laughs> I don't care whoever picked what. I'm putting it in the blend. Holy crap. All right. Let me move that out of the way here. Let me put the bottle in front here. All right. Oh, my God. This is this is so rich in brown sugars and in um, deep, dark. Uh, there's, a, there's like a caramelized apple note in here. Wow. I mean, vanilla extract, a good amount of oak in there too, Man, black pepper, baking spices, definitely a, a huge burst of cinnamon that's coming through now as this opens up. D.H. Silv said, how many Weller 107s for the Mictors? <laughs> I actually traded a uh, Four Roses uh, limited edition for it. So um, I, had, I had had a bunch of limited editions for the Four Roses. So I traded one of them to get that one. So it was pretty pretty good trade. Oak and Smoke Whiskey. Mictors is doing some amazing things. Yes, they are. Brett Colombo says, in my opinion, better than the 10-year. Man. This has, uh, I mean, this has everything you want. It's got a nuttiness characteristic. It has some dark fruits to it, some baking spices. It's really delicious. All right, I can't wait to taste this stuff. Let's go in for it, guys. Cheers. Oh, yeah, that's good. That is just... That is just all baking spice. I mean, this is just like pure dessert. <clears throat> Cinnamon. 
man, nutmeg, a ton of cinnamon. I mean, it can't get, I mean, it just keeps bursting out there. Deep rich caramels on the finish. It's really nice. It's not overwhelming too. It's not a super high proof. I mean, this is coming in at um, 106.8. So it's not a ton of proof, but you're getting to taste all those amaz amazing flavors here. Man, this is butterscotch, maple syrup a little bit too. This is coating the palate extremely well. Damn, that is a damn fine bottle right there. This is probably only going to get better like most Michters do. Uh, J-Dub Lifter, this is, the, uh, this is the Michters limited release barrel strength. So there's the bottle, guys. A nice close-up there. Absolutely delicious. Um, as it opens up, it's getting a little bit more of a honey characteristic to it. Mmm. Man, there's a roasted pecan characteristic. I mean, this thing is all over the place. I keep getting different flavors every time I go into it. It's really, really nice on the palate. And it leaves just like the perfect bit of pepperiness there. It's not, it's not like a super proofer, but I mean, you get all this flavor and then you get just enough lingering burn to make you want to go back in there for more. But it's more of that rye spice characteristic. It's not like an alcohol burn. Just a beautiful bur bourbon. I mean, Michter's is just, and I would agree, I think I would take this over the 10. The 10 is really good, but this is just, this is on, this is the 10 like amped up like to another level. Amazing stuff. Mm. Dram man full erection on the review. <laughs> man. Yeah, the, the rye spice that's in here a little bit. The um but mostly all the sweetness. And it just keeps evolving too. Every sip I go to. Now it's becoming a little bit more dark fruit forward. Getting a little bit uh, more of a cherry characteristic there to go along with that deep, rich caramel. It's it's very creamy. Not super creamy on the palate, but it definitely sticks around. That is a friggin' winner of a bourbon. Hell yeah. Michter's Barrel Strength. Woo! If you guys ever see this anywhere, ugh, buy it on sight. That's all I'm going to say. It's friggin' amazing. All right. So now we're going to cl cleanse our palate. We're going to go in for some Basil Hayden uh, rye. And then uh, to finish off the night, what we're going to do is I'm going to go a little longer tonight because I'm just having some fun here, guys. And I'm starting to feel the whiskey a little bit. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this. We're going to try this out uh, after a lot of water. Um, dark meat chicken. So better than the Jephthah? Uh, yeah, way better than the Jephthah. Uh, not, even, not even in the same stratosphere as the Michters. Um uh, then what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna do some giveaways tonight. We're gonna do a special giveaway tonight where we're gonna do a uh, pay it forward night. So we're gonna play a round of guess the bottle. I know you guys love that game. Uh, we're gonna play two rounds of guess the bottle, and whoever wins a sample, it's pay it forward night. So what you're gonna do is, if you know someone in the chat or want someone in the chat to get a sample as well, the person that wins the sample can call that out, and I will send uh, four people tonight some samples. Uh, and I'll let you know what the choices are. So, um, so we're going to do that in a little bit. But first, we're going to taste this Basil Hayden. And if anyone has uh, any other ideas for the blends, if you've been thinking about it, we have a little bit of room in the decanter. Uh, right here. I could probably fit probably one more for the decanter. But then if you guys want to add to the scotch blend, we could do that too. You know what? I'm going to add a little of those mixtures to the, to the blend. Why not? Let's add a little mixers to the blend. Oh, hell yeah. All right. Beauteous. Hey, Lochness is in the house. How you doing? Andrew Spirell, uh, glad it's a long show. I just got home and could finally tune in. Thanks for coming in, Lochness. All right. So I probably have room for one more bourbon in there if anyone wants to, uh, like I said, super chat and a blend if you guys have any ideas of what else I could throw in there. But that, I have a feeling, is going to be a stellar blend. Uh, let me cap it right here. 
Let me drink some water. And now let's go into the Basel Hayden. Uh, where's my leftover glass here? Here we go. Chad Holly says that blend is the equivalent of the USA All-Star basketball team. <laughs> yeah, there are some winners in there, man. Aussie Whiskey Guy says, question, Jason, do you know if Gifts on Glass ship your glassware internationally? Um, I don't know. I'll ask. Uh, yeah, I'll ask him, but maybe. I think I think they would. Probably a little bit extra to ship over there. But, yeah, it probably depends on how many glasses you order. Uh, Steven Sussman says, top it off with 101. That's a hell of an idea. Hey, Swami from Walton March, you're all in the house. How you doing, Swami? He has a $4, Jason, bringing back the strap. There it is, buddy. He loves the chin strap. All right, top it off with 101. Do I have one right here? I think I do. Um, I do. Don't judge me. It's the plastic bottle one, but this is also the one with the older stuff in it. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to top it off with this. This is how we're going to finish off the blend, guys. We're going to top it off with the Wild Turkey 101. And there it is. The viewer blend has been created, folks. This is going to mingle for about a week before I even taste it. And then next week on the live show uh, with, the, um, uh, with the Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, we're going to, um, we're going to crack this baby open. And Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, uh, what I can do before next week, once it sits a few days, I'll send you some samples of this and we can crack it open on the live stream. How does that sound? That'll be fun. That's what we're going to do, man. Uh, all right. We need samples. Numenium. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll... Uh... You know, I'll give you guys the choice. Well, this has to sit for a little bit, so I'm not going to give away samples of this tonight. Next week, on next week's lives with Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews, we'll give away some samples of this, okay, guys? So we're going to let this, uh, we're going to put this away. We're going to let it sit. Beautiful decanter. Love it. Uh, all right, let's get into this Basil Hayden now and see what we get. So I haven't even smelled this stuff or tasted it. So this is the deal with this Basil Hayden. So this is a uh, Caribbean Reserve Rye. This is a uh, so this is a blend of Kentucky Straight Rye whiskey, uh, obviously some of the Jim Beam uh, rye whiskey, blended with their Canadian rye whiskey, uh, you know from their partners up in um, in Canada, uh, you know Canadian Club, and then this has finished with rum. Now that's a tricky uh, that's a tricky kind of a description there because. Finished with rum can mean a few different things. This, from what I understand, was not actually finished in a rum barrel. I think they actually blended this with black strap rum. So, just like what they did with their port uh, rye, their dark, uh, excuse me, their dark rye, which I think they put some port in it, even though they say finished. You know, that's a kind of a debatable term. Beam has just been walking the line with those uh, those bourbon terms lately. Uh, Karen B. Ford, are you going to do a review on the blend? Uh, I will next week, Karen. Once it, I want to let this sit for a week because blends are always better once you let all that beautiful juice mingle together. So I want to see how it comes out. Uh, so now Basil Hayden. So this comes in, if you guys don't know, this is 40% uh, ABV. It's 90 proof, so really low proof. I'm not a huge fan of Basil Hayden to begin with. Um, uh, but... I was curious because I, you know, I really have gotten into, I've had some really beautiful, delicious rum uh, finished whiskeys. And even though this isn't really finished in rum, I think they just poured some in there. So let's go to the nose and see what we get out of this one. Here we go, guys. So the rum is extremely, extremely sweet. This is just all rich molasses. You smell a lot of the rum characteristic. Dear Lord, it's it's pure maple syrup. That's all. That's all I could taste, or I could smell. I should say, God, it's it's pure maple syrup. This is like smelling a bottle of Aunt Jemima or Mrs. Butterworth, whatever your favorite syrup is for pancakes and waffles. 
Talk about whiskey and waffles. This one might be the best one to have with uh, waffles. Jimmy the Kid said, open that Bardstown Fusion Curious on your take. Uh, Jimmy the Kid, that's going to be uh, my next review. So uh, you'll you'll see the next video on that one. Um, I'm cracking that one open tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to sip on it. Then I'm going to film a review. And then that will be my review on Friday for that Bardstown um, Fusion. So that one's coming, buddy. <clears throat> Yeah, so, the, yeah, so, um, whatchamacallit, the, the black strap, a black strap rum, I actually like, uh, I like some of the, the really good ones, but this one is just pure maple syrup sugar. It's like someone took, uh, the whiskey and poured, dumped a bunch of brown sugar in it. It's so super sweet. Rebecca Page, it's puke night at the magic drum. <laughs> Well, we'll see what we got in the palette, guys. All right, I'm going in for a taste of this stuff. Let's see. Cheers. Oh, oh God, man. That is... It is. It's. It, it just doesn't taste right. <laughs> It just doesn't taste right. Oh my god. That is uh That is real that is one of the strangest things I've ever tasted. It starts like a rye and then ends with this um, ridiculously sweet molasses maple but the the rye kind of sticks around and it's just oh my god. Yeah, have you guys ever had like a like a rum ball? Um, it it almost tastes like doughy. You know, you get like that that dough flavor, but you know when you when you kind of when you finish chewing it, all that super super sweet molasses and the rum kind of just overtakes everything. That's what it is. That's the best way I can. Ex uh, that's the best way I can. Um, I can explain it. Um. It's the Bobby Hill of bourbon ain't right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said, gonna go chug a bottle of Aunt Jemima right now. Yeah. Um, uh, man. The thing is, is though, is that this will, this, this will have a market. Uh, people that like amazingly super, super sweet whiskey, uh, rye, I mean, they'll pretty much dig this, I think, but. I just I just can't get into. It. I'm gonna take one more sip to see if there's anything else. Right now for me it's just, it's all maple syrup. It's all like molasses, uh, brown sugars. There's definitely a huge rum characteristic in there. But you could tell this wasn't finished in rum. They just freaking poured some blackstrap rum in there and blended it together. That's it. Yeah. See, my third sip it just got worse. Yep. Nope. Okay. Now there's no finish. I'm not getting the the sweetness that I was getting. Uh, oh. I'm not getting the sweetness that I was getting on the uh, on the first couple sips on the finish. Now the finish just completely went away, and now I'm just left with this weird rye, rummy. Yeah. No. Nope. I'm sure this is good for some people. It might be good with waffles in the morning because it's that sweet, but. As a sipper, uh, no thanks. Uh, yeah, it's totally sounds like a cocktail uh, whiskey. Yeah. Radislav Trap, good call. Doug Krisoff comes in with a $10 super chat, feeling bad for all you had to endure tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doug. This is for you, buddy. Um, you know, do this, guys. Do this, guys, uh, for you. I'm not... I'm hoping if you see these bottles, there are some to avoid. Really, the only two winners we had tonight, uh, the Wathens, which wasn't that bad, which was pretty good. Uh, but only you can find it for 30 bucks. It's not a bad dram. Anything higher than that, I really wouldn't pay for the Wathens. Uh, but there are still other bourbons cheaper that I'd probably still take over that one. But if you like an easy sipper that's smooth, not a big finish. Maybe somebody getting into bourbon, that might be a good pick. Uh, but so far, the star of the show has been that Michter's Barrel Strength. Holy, holy shit, it's good. Okay. 
All right. Here's the blend, guys. I'm going to give this a little bit of a shake here. Oh, this thing is going to be righteous, I think. So I'm, I'm, I can't wait. You guys had some amazing choices. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to do. We are going to uh, do our giveaways tonight. Uh, we're going to play Guess the Bottle. So this is the game where I show you a silhouette of a bottle shape. And the first one in the chat to guess what bottle it is uh, will get to choose a, a sample. And then tonight, uh, what you're also going to get to do is pay it forward to another viewer. So if you're in the chat and you want to send a, a, a sample to someone else, uh, you could call them out. It would be awesome. Um, so we're going to do this two times. So that means four samples. Uh, and tonight's choices are um, you can either do, let's see here. Uh, I'll send you either, uh, you guys can pick from the Bell Mead uh, Cognac Finish. Um, I'll, I'll do the Four Gate. I'll send a sample of the Four Gate to you if you want to. Uh, or if you want, I'll send you the Michter's Barrel Proof. Um, uh, anything else that I have that maybe you guys would want? Uh, or... Or I could send you the new Elijah Craig uh, barrel proof, the uh, the B uh, the B five uh, B five one nine. If you guys haven't had that one yet either, because that's, I mean, the C nine one eight is still my favorite, but that one has quickly made its way to like second because it's that good. So, um, oak and smoke. Yeah, sorry about the blend. Yeah, oak and smoke whiskey. I'm gonna let that sit for a few days. I'm gonna send you some samples. We'll open it on the um, uh, on the live. So, all right. So let's get into it, guys. So here comes. Get your uh, get your fingers ready. Now remember, as with everything else, guys, the first one I happen to see in my chat in my chat window that gets the answer right will win. So sometimes it looks different from your chat, but I have to go by what I see. So um, here is the first guess the bottle of the night, and I will wait for the answers. Here we go. Chad Holly, yes. The the older ones are really good too. Uh, I'm talking about the newer bottles. The old ones hold a special place in my heart. So those are always amazingly delicious. And the first one that got it was that I see is Luis Ochoa. Luis Ochoa gets it with the Dickel. The Dickel 12 comes in. Luis Ochoa, good job, buddy. You got it first. I'm going to write you down, buddy. All right, Luis. So you got it. It is the George Dickel Tennessee whiskey bottle. Good job, buddy. Nice, nice job. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, Lewis, Lewis, what is going to be your, uh, what is going to be your choice for, uh, a pick of the four that I mentioned? And then who do you want to pay it forward to in the chat? Who else do you want them to get a dram? So, Lewis, pick out what you want. I said you have. You could either try the Michter's Barrel Proof. You could try the Bellmead Cognac, the Four Gate, um, uh, or you could try the Elijah Craig uh, B519. So, uh, and whoever you pick to pay it forward will get the same. We'll get the same dram, unless they want something else. Yeah, good call, man. That was. I thought that was gonna be a tough one, but he. It took a few two, few guesses, but he got it. Killer Jolt said, I have a bottle of Dickel right in front of me, and I had no idea. <laughs> That's how it happens. Sometimes you, uh, uh, Luis Ochoa says, four gate and another for Richie Z. All right. So both of you are getting some four gate. All right, guys. Congrats. Awesome. Uh, let it, Rebecca Page is, uh, she said, let him try the Jephthah. <laughs> Come on, who wants a who wants a sample of Jeff the Creed? I got plenty. I got plenty. Um, all right, so Richie Z is going to get a sample uh, with Louis Ochoa. Both of you will be getting the four gate. So uh, congrats, guys. 
Uh, all right, let's go to the second giveaway of the night. Um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember what I picked here for the... Oh, I do remember what it is. Okay. Uh, wise guy said, I got some 14-year dickle juice. Okay, so um, I have I have the new dickle bottled and bond coming my way. I'm going to do a full review on that one, so that should be fun. But I'm going to do all the dickles together. I'm going to have a fun, uh, a fun episode with that one. So, uh, all right, here we go. Let's go to the second uh, giveaway here. So this is for the next one, and let's see uh, if you guys can pick this one. Get your uh, fingers ready, and here we go. New Manium just keeps guessing Basil Hayden. <laughs> it's not Basil Hayden. Nope. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's coming fast. I got to see here. Russell's Parker's Legion. Nope. Nope. Rabbit Hole. Nope. Nope. Nobody's got it so far. It's not Jephtha. <laughs> it is not Jephtha. I'll give you guys a hint. This is uh, this is a this is a bourbon. It is a bourbon. Oh, this is a harder one, man. Nobody's getting it so far. No, Andrew, it's not Dickel. Let's see. Lewis said Heaven's Door. Oh, that's it. That is a really good guess, but it's not Heaven's Door. I saw Jeffrey Wack. Jeffrey Wack gets it. It is Remus. Repeal Reserve. Good call, Jeffrey Wack. Jeffrey Wack gets it. It's the Remus Repeal Reserve. That's right. Uh, this bottle is about a hundred bucks. It's a hundred proof. I've uh, I've only had one pour of this. Uh, you know, I thought it was pretty good, but I definitely don't think it's worth a hundred bucks. Um, but yeah, so Jeffrey Wack, you got it, man. It is the Remus. Uh, all right. So Jeffrey Wack, you get it. Uh, good job, buddy. Good call, man. Jeffrey Wack says, booyah. All right, Jeffrey, what is your choice? What do you, uh, what is a sample you want tonight? And who are you going to pay it forward to? Cause it's all about sharing. So let me know, buddy. <laughs> D8, so that, that didn't look anything like Remus. <laughs> yeah, man, I got to make it somewhat difficult because uh, the last uh, the last few that I had, I mean, the first few guests of bottles, you guys were getting in like two seconds. So nice that Jeff got it. Um, that's right. Brandon Weiss sharing is caring. All right, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Wack, what is your choice between the four uh, that I kind of um, – uh, Yana Wiss said, Remus was a player during uh, during pro- Prohibition. Exactly. Jeffrey Wack says, Fourgate with Dram Man. Nice. Jeffrey Wack, also going with Fourgate. Now, Dram Man, I know you have a pretty decent collection. Do you want something else or do you do you have the Fourgate or have you tried it? So if you want something else, Dram Man, let me know. Um uh, Jeffrey Wack, throw your uh, throw your email in the chat so that's why I can I could grab it, write it down, and I'll get in contact with you. Um, uh, Louis Ochoa, uh, do the same thing. Uh, throw your email in the chat if you get a chance. Actually, you know what? I'll uh, I'll reach out to Richie Z. I have his contact info, and we'll get everything together. But um, Jeffrey Wack, definitely throw your uh, definitely throw your uh, your email in the chat, and um, let's see. Yeah, Dram Man gets it. He's paying it forward. Good job, man. Yeah, Yon- Yana Wishkin did, did uh, actually brought up a really good point. Remus was actually a very big player in, during Prohibition. And that's one of the stories uh, to actually sell the bottle, which is uh, – it's a really cool story. I read a little bit about him in Bourbon Justice, but um, I think he was in Bourbon Justice a little bit. Or maybe he wasn't. Maybe it was another book I read. 
Uh, but yeah, it's it's an interesting bourbon. Uh, I don't know if I'd still pay a hundred bucks for that one, but it's not bad. Uh, Jeffrey dot whack at Gmail. That's easy enough. <laughs> Uh, and Dram Man. Oh, he wants the four gate too. All right, everyone's getting four gate tonight. Nice. I can't wait to share it with you guys because I think it's a stellar, stellar bourbon. It's delicious. And I got plenty of it, so I can't wait to share it with you guys. Um, Dark Meat Chicken. It's not about the whiskey with the people you share it with. So everybody in the chat, get a sample of Jeff the Creed. Jeff the Creed for everybody. Yes. <laughs> Who wants some Jeff the? Anybody want some Jeff the? No, you don't. Okay. All right, so this is what I'm going to do, guys. Uh, I know I said I'm going to let it mingle a little bit, but what is this? All right, Lewis, I got you, buddy. Oh, that's the Wathens. That, man, that is, like, super sweet, man. I like the Wathens. It's good. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Uh, Jeffrey Wack, thank you so much. With a drum. Good job, buddy. Uh, I'd match the drum. Did you get more than one bottle of Fourgate? Uh, no, I only have one, but I have uh, I have another one I think that I'm going to get. Uh, I also got some really cool uh, info on the second one coming out, but I can't mention that yet. But it should be a pretty interesting blend. It's like the first one. Um, all right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to give you guys a preview of the blend. Before we sign off here. So let me get some water in here. All right. Here it is, folks. The blend you guys created. Let's do a little bit of a preview here. And let's see how it kind of mingled together so far. Do a little bit here. Yeah, so the four gate is on sale at party, so it's nothing crazy, but 10, 15 bucks last time I saw it. Uh the next time you go there, dude, if you see it again, let me know. Because I want another bottle of that stuff. It's that good. Uh, Chad, I tipped it earlier. I was kind of shaking it around, so I hope it blended a little bit good here. So let's uh, let's just see how it's so far kind of mingling here. So let's go on the nose. Oh, it's got a stellar nose so far, guys. So far off the bat, this this it smells like a freaking Rick House. It smells unbelievable. There's some good rye spice. It's extremely cherry forward. Very, very cherry. Very cinnamon. This is crazy, but on the nose, it almost smells like a like a really amazing wild turkey pick. <laughs> if you could believe that. Like a Russell's Reserve pick. Like it smells like an amazing Russell's Reserve pick on the nose so far. There's definitely some proof to it. I mean, you could smell the proof. Woo! Richie Z said the blend will have settled well by blending again in two. Can you revisit then? Oh yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're gonna revisit it next week too when I have the Oak and Smoke Whiskey reviews on here too after it sits a week and we'll see how it kind of progresses. This is all cherry, cinnamon, oak, like Rick House Angel Share smell. That is really nice on the nose so far. All right, let's go in for a sip, guys, before we sign off here. Cheers. Oh, wow. That is, holy crap. That thing is just, it's still going. I mean, the mouthfeel on this thing is unreal. I mean, it's completely coating the palate. Rye spice, a lot of sweetness to, though, too. A good, a good rye kick. I think adding that Willet Rye might have maybe even helped it a little bit. There's a lemony, cherry, baking spice. Man. 
Man, if it gets better than this, that's going to be a, a hell of a blend. Oh, dude. That's really good. You know what this tastes like? It tastes like Elijah Craig C918 with some extra levels of Rick House and sweet flavors. If you could take Elijah Craig C918 and amp it even more, that's what this is. Incredible. I cannot wait to see what this is going to turn into in like a week. Oh my God. Um, do you remember the recipe? Uh, I'll go back to and I'll and I'll read what I, and I watch what I put in it. I think I remember it a good amount, but it's really good. Um, Karen, yes, actually, Karen, I will do that. I'll put that in the, um, I'll put that in the bottom of the comments. What was in the blend? Uh, once I rewatch and, and, and do it, um, I will post the list, uh, Chris Beaton. Oh, he's late. Damn it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oak and smoke whiskey reuse. Let this sit for a few days and I'll get some samples out to you so you guys can have it, uh, for the, uh, for the live next week. Um, She said, if that is the case, I am in. Yeah. Really, uh, really great. Um, oh, Jason Greslick's in the house. How you doing, man? Really great. So, like I said, um, we had a lot of whiskey tonight. I'm starting to feel it. Uh, things are getting blurry. That was my little motorboat. Um, the blend was amazing. Thanks to all of you that super chatted and contributed to this blend. You guys are brilliant. Um, after this sits a little bit, it's going to be amazing. Next week, Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews is going to be on the channel with me. We're going to be sipping this blend. We're also going to be talking about a really cool distillery making uh, a, a, uh, a bourbon called Horse Soldier, which they reviewed not too long ago, which is uh, made by some pretty special people. So definitely tune into that. Uh, they'll also have a little bit of the blend. Um, if you guys haven't yet, like I mentioned, uh, look on my Patreon page if you want to become a member. Uh, I might send some of this blend out to my patrons. So, uh, you guys, if you're patrons, you might get some of this uh, after it sits a little bit as well. If you guys also haven't, uh, ordered any of my whiskey hats yet, uh, leave a comment down on this video and, uh, let me know if you want one. I still have, uh, I have a good amount left. Um, but they, they're about halfway gone already. There a lot of people ordered them pretty fast. Um, but after that, what can I say? Thank you so much tonight for the super chats, for everything. Tune in next week. But Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews and myself as we taste this blend again. Talk about a horse soldier. Thank you so much tonight. Thank you for the support. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Uh, take care, everybody. And I will see you next week. Cheers, everybody.